Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate in this video how to set up render passes in uh, Maya 2018 uh, using the Arnold renderer. Now, uh, this is a scene that I previously set up, and uh, you can see that I'm rendering this uh, self shadow passes. And in this uh, render passes in Maya, I have four different render passes for the diffuse of the ship here, okay, the ship, ship shadow. Okay, cast on the ground and also the uh, ambient occlusion, the AO, and the ship's own self shadow. All right, so I'm going to start all over again. I'm going to start from a clean slate on how to set up this 3D uh, ship, this scene here. So I'm going to start with a new scene. Don't save. All right. So first, I'm going to bring in the assets. So I'm going to import in the assets. I'm going to import in a ship from my 3D asset here. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the default lights and the camera. All right, and also I'm going to apply a material. Okay, this ship already has been UV unwrapped. So right mouse click, assign new material. Okay, I'm going to give it a blend material. And for the color, I'm just going to pull in a UV, a simple UV unwrapped texture, which I already done for it. If I press number six, okay, I should be able to see the textures uh, shown on it. If I press number three, I should see the subdivided version of the ship. Okay, I'm going to create a, I'm going to name this ship a ship, okay, in the outliner. So just double click on the name. And I'm going to create a floor plane so that it can receive shadows. Okay, so I'm going to just name this floor or ground. Okay, next, I'm going to set up the environment. I'm going to create a HDR lighting environment. So I'm going to click on Arnold on top here and then create lights, sky dome light. Now the sky dome light need the image texture so that the image can actually generate light to light this scene. So with the sky dome selected, go to the properties here, under color, click on the checker box so that you can bring in the file and then Directing the file containing the HDR image. Okay, so now if we move our perspective view around, let me just close this render setting, we should be able to see uh, the render settings of our scene here. So I'm not going to use the perspective as a rendering camera, so I'm going to create a brand new camera. So create a new camera. I'm going to go through looking through the camera and then adjust it based on the view here. Okay. So I'm just going to roughly adjust it to match the scene here. For this particular uh, VFX shot, this was done using uh, 25, was shot on a 25 frames per second device. So let me just adjust some settings here. Now rendering, we'll be rendering it as a sequence eventually. So for now, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to render just one frame as an example. Let's say, for example, frame 55. Okay. So I'm going to scrub over to frame 55 as our test frame. And uh, in the track version of this camera, okay, I'm going to bring in the image sequence that shows the movement of the camera. So click on view here, image plane, import image, right, go over to the folder containing the image sequence and I'm going to specify as an image sequence. So right now you can see the image sequence is being projected behind this uh, image plane here and we can also go to the camera settings to change it to overscan so that we can see the uh, entire aspect ratio. Right, you can also use the opportunity to adjust the camera. Okay, move the camera around until you get the perspective to kind of match. All right. Okay, so yeah, so if I, as I as I scrub the timeline, you can see that uh, the plane right actually moves, or rather the axis of the camera or where is it pointing is actually moving. So I have not tracked this camera yet. So I'm just going to use this to set up my multi path. So I'm going to have. Rotate the ship around so that it has a much more interesting angle. 
Right, so now I got a ship, I got a ground plane, uh, I got a light source in the form of the uh, dome light. I need to have a directional light because I know that when I took this HDR 360 picture, there's a very strong light source coming right from above. Okay, I can show it here by going to the perspective camera. And if I will take my perspective camera upwards, you can see there's a very strong light source coming from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a directional light and the directional light is oriented the same direction as where the sunlight is coming from. So I'm going to go and create lights, directional light. And press W, move the di directional light up. Now the directional light doesn't care where the position is, but what it cares is the direction. So if you press E, you can go to rotate, then you can grab and rotate the gizmo until the light is actually pointing the same direction as where the environmental map is coming from. Okay, so now if you have tracked your camera and if your orientation is off, okay, you can always select the dome and rotate it to match the orientation again. All right, because since I'm not using a tracked camera here, I'm just going to demonstrate using a single frame. Now to check your lighting, whether is it working, first I'm going to just move the ship, have the ship float up a little bit, okay, so they can cast a shadow on this plane. Then for the renderer, I'm going to turn on Arno and I'm going to hit play so the viewport should uh, give a preview of what the look should look like what it should look like okay I'm going to look through the camera and now notice that my ship is very reflective because of the default settings of my blend material so I'm going to right mouse click on the ship go to the material attributes and really kill the reflectivity by just pulling it down okay and my specular low roll off okay so to give it Specular color and row of eccentricity. Just, just generally bring it down so that it behaves more like a lambent material. All right. So I do not want to see the uh, my my backdrop through the camera. So I'm going to select the dome and then go out under the visibility and I'm just going to scrub it down until the dome is not visible, so it doesn't interfere with my uh, life plate. So now I can see this render uh, very clearly. I can see some self shadow on the ship's fin here. Okay, and I can also adjust the intensity of the light so I can have a better look of the light quality. Go to Arno, you can go to Arno and adjust the exposure and the angle to soften up the edges of the shadow a little bit. Okay, so I'm satisfied with this uh, render result. Now I need to apply a material to the floor plane. Right mouse click, assign new material. I want to assign a AI shadow matte material so that it becomes transparent and it becomes just purely a shadow catcher. So this is uh, the very close to the final look that I want. So now I need to separate this into render passes so that I can individually manipulate things like the shadows, the diffuse, and of course the uh, ambient occlusion which I can use to uh, to composite using a compositing software. All right, so let's go and start setting up the render pass. Okay, so the render pass button here is over here, the render uh, setup window. Just click on this. Okay, so if your render setup window appears like that, you have to just grab the property and then just push it gently to the edge of this window. Okay, but generally the properties and the render layers button right should be stuck together like this. So when you open it up, this is what it should look like. Okay. All right. So now let's set up our first render layer. Now before I continue, let me just save my file again. Save scene. In fact, I have not saved this scene yet. So let me just put it inside the proper folder. And save. Okay. So. We want to create first a render layer that only shows the colors of the ship, right? So to do that, we need to create a first render pass. Now, you can see over here the scene, right? If you did not assign any render pass, everything you render will be rendered and is represented by this visibility. If you click on the visibility, right now because there's no other layers to, to, uh, for you to switch to, this is always on. Okay, the clapper board just simply means that uh, this layer will be rendered. So by default, this is the master layer. So we're gonna create a new individual layer and we're gonna name it, I'm gonna call it diffuse ship. 
okay, be very specific. Okay, so that means I only want the ship diffuse uh, to be rendered in this layer. Okay, you can also click on the eyeball. So right now, you notice once I click on the eyeball, the ship has disappeared. That's because we need to create a collection where the ship is going to be rendered. So to create a collection, you just right mouse click on this layer and click on create collection. And then to make it more specific, we're going to call this the diffuse underscore ship. All right. And right now the collection is empty, so we need to go to the outliner and choose things that will affect the ship. Of course, we need the ship and also we need the lights because the lights are required to light up the ship and show the diffuse color. So go ahead and after you selected them in the outliner, go and click on add. So now it is part of the collection. And you can see that the ship is now visible. Okay. And to test it out, you can let me just stop the uh, the viewport renderer for now. And I'm just gonna use the uh, okay, let me just stop this and close this. And I'm just gonna use the normal renderer, just hit render. Okay, and RGB. Okay, so this is this is what is being rendered. Okay, now you can see the shadow is also being rendered here. The ship's fin is casting its own shadow, which is something that we do not want. So we want to apply an override to this layer so that the shadow is not rendered. Okay, so how do we do that? So let's go back to our render layer setup again. And okay, go, go to and select the ship itself. And make sure you're in the diffuse layer, uh, the diffuse collection rather, <coughs> diffuse ship collection. Click on ship, then go over to the ship attributes editor. Okay, under the second tab, ship shape, then go down to the Arnold and then click on uncheck the cast shadow. Now you can uncheck here, but you, that means the cast shadow will happen across whether is it a layer whether is it in a layer or not so we need to put something called an override so that this override will only happen while it is in this layer so we have to right mouse click on this right mouse click on cast shadow and go to here that says create absolute override for this visible layer okay it changes into this orange color which means that there's an override being applied so every time you see an orange color that means an override has been applied to this property and also over at the layer setup, render layer setup, you see that the absolute override button has appeared. You can go directly, directly to it and you can see the override controls the shadow. So I'm going to uncheck the shadow. Now let's take a look at the rendered result. Okay, and uh, let's see whether we can put this in the uh, buffer. Okay, I click on here to put in the buffer. Now I just hit render again. Now to render, make sure that this eyeball is on for the diffuse ship. Then hit render. Now I'm expecting no more shadow, and true enough, there's no longer self shadow. Okay, if you scrub back and forth between the previous image, and you can see now the ship is rendered out with an even diffuse color. All right. So now we can go on to build another render layer. So uh, this one is done. We can click on this to minimize. Now we can create a new layer, okay, and then this time we want to create a layer especially for the shadow. Uh, that is cast on the ground. All right. So we're going to call this ship shadow or ship ground shadow to be very specific. Okay. And also we want to make it active. So click on it. So you notice everything disappears because there's no collection. The collection is empty. So right mouse click on this layer and create a collection. I'll call this the ship ground shadow. And then go and click on the ship. We definitely need the ground because we need the ship to cast a shadow on the ground. We also need all the lights again. And then go ahead and add them to the collection. All right. But this time we need to apply a shader, a shader override so that every object will behave like a shadow catcher. So to do that, click on the collection, right mouse click on the collection and click on create shader override. All right. Now the shader override, there's a checker box button here. Click on the checker box button. Go over to Arnold, click on Shader, and then click on AI Shadow Map. Now, everything should turn into this gray material in this viewport. And if you render, everything should turn black, which is what we expect. So, 
let's add this to another buffer and then we'll hit render again and everything turns black is as, as expected because in order to see the shadows you need to go over to alpha channel mode and then you can see the ship's own self shadow and the shadow that is cast by the ship itself on the ground itself but in this case we only want the ground shadow we do not want the shadow of the ship so how do we switch off the shadows of the ship so that means we need to apply another override another attribute override so in this case we need to apply an override to override the ship's self shadow so how do we do that so go ahead and select the ship and go over to the second tab again under Arno and this time we want to apply an override to the primary visibility so right mouse click and create an absolute override for the primary uh, visibility and then you can just uncheck it all right so if you click over here you notice that this primary visibility is now unchecked and with that done you can hit render again I'm going to just put this in the buffer and then hit render and now you can see the ship is no longer visible but yet it still casts a shadow as you can see from the previous render okay so I'm going to switch this back to RGB because uh, no actually let's go back to alpha because there's still one more shadow now I need to create a ship self shadow okay so I'm going to minimize this and create a new collection call this the ship self shadow and uh, since it's only the ship I only need the ship and then the two lights so create a collection the ship the two lights and then add the collection and assign a shader override because we need it to have the same shader AI shadow match okay and then we can do a test render okay so now uh, I think let's see uh, this is the wrong collection because we are supposed to see the ship own self I think the wrong collection is added oh wait, wait it is correct the reason is because my eyeball is on the wrong layer so it must click on the eyeball to activate the layer and let's try that again and yes now we can see the the shader okay but uh, this one looks, still looks a little bit odd okay let me see if I have done something differently okay so I think for now I'm just going to change my image plane attribute I want to make sure that it is not visible okay and then I'm going to do the rendering again yes okay so now I can see I only see the ship's own self shadow all right okay, because for some reason the uh, background was turned on early on all right so the ship self shadow is on now there's one more thing left that is the ambient occlusion so click on create a new layer call this ship AO right mouse click create collection we need only the ship okay now for ambient occlusion you do not need any lights so add to create this right mouse click on the collection okay I'm going to call it ship AO right mouse click create a shader override and click on the checker box and go to Arnold shader ambient occlusion and remember to click on the eyeball okay otherwise it will keep on rendering this layer then click on render again and click on instead of alpha channel click on RGB and yes true enough this is the ambient occlusion okay so we have all our render layers set up and all of this checker pattern right this uh, crapper board is active that means all these will be rendered now we do not need to render the master so we can uncheck this so we will only be rendering these four layers right so let's go to our to our render setup so click on render setup and I already set it to render just frame 55 just to test for testing purposes it's going to render to my uh, default images folders right and uh, I'm setting it up as an Im image sequence even though the start frame and end frame is just one frame okay so that I can make use of the render sequence tool to render so I'm going to render it at full HD 
okay, HD 1080. All right, and once I'm ready, I'll just hit render. Now, before you render, you need to make sure you are in rendering mode. Click on render and click on render sequence, the option box. Now, this is very important. Now, I set this previously. Now, when you open this up, your render enabled layers is off. Make sure that this is on. Otherwise, you will only render the last selected layer. So you can see there are many different layers. There's a master diffuse shadow, the ship ground shadow, ship self shadow, and the ship AO. All right. So make sure that all the render enabled layers uh, option is on. And uh, we are already set to our rendered location. Then you just hit render sequence. So what is going to happen is Maya is going to go through all the different layers and render them out. So if you go and check out the yeah, so you can see the folders are starting to appear. Okay, and we have our EXRs. And let me just double click open. Yeah, true enough, we have our diffuse. Okay, let me just close up the previous ones so that we don't mix it up. Okay, so this is our diffuse, and this is our AO. This is our ground shadow okay and then finally our self shadow okay so we have our self so we have all the exrs all open so i can quickly just layer this up in photoshop okay so this is the layer zero now uh, i'm just going to open up the uh, frame 55 which i already have prepared here We're going to open up this in Photoshop. So this is my frame 55. This is a background, the exact same frame. So I'm going to use this as a base background. Then I'm going to copy this. And then Control V to paste. Now if you press Control V, okay, it's going to paste in the center. So let me undo that. Control Shift V, then you'll be pasting based on the aspect ratio. Next is this ambient occlusion. Control A, Control C, then Control Shift V. All right, and then ambient occlusion. We need to apply a multiply blend so that the ambient occlusion will merge with the ship. All right. Okay. So now we have ambient occlusion. I can close this. Okay. I don't need the diffuse. Now let's take a look at the self shadow. So Control A, Control C. Let's go back to the layer. Then Control Shift V. So now we have the self shadow. Okay, and then finally the ship shadow, control A, control C, and then control shift V. Alright, so now all the layers are pasted up okay, on screen. And with this, you can manually adjust the opacity if you don't want the shadow to be dark, or you can apply filters to blur it. Okay, for example, let me blur up this shadow, okay, and then I noticed some noise on my uh, this self shadow. So if I can go to the self shadow, to blur it up a little bit as well. So filter apply blur. So it looks a little bit nicer, much softer. Doesn't look so noisy. And let's say the colors I want my diffuse to be more vibrant. You just bump up the saturation. Okay, make it stand out a little bit. So this is the, um, generally speaking, this is the benefits of having uh, separate layers. So if this is a separate sequence, right, we can control this individually without having to render everything all over again. So that is the reason why uh, rendering in multi-passes is a much practiced technique in this industry for visual effects or for uh, CG production. Okay, so that's it for the video. I'm going to stop recording now.